Anyway, I've got a few more of these uh, push rods to make. And I found a long time ago I, I can cut them off. I used to have it set so that I could cut this off with a cutoff tool when I was doing the mill turning. And I found that it's just a whole lot easier, safer, more predictable if I just cut them off with the cutoff wheel, hit them on the belt sander real quick, and, and then I can load them into the mill and I can turn them with a, uh, a tool. And it was actually a lot cheaper because I kept breaking the stinking cutoff tools because these uh, these bolts, if I were to grab it, you know, here in the lathe kind of thing, they got a lot of warp to them. So uh, normal carbide tooling really doesn't care, but the cutoff tool, the little uh, Nicole mini cut system, it cared a lot. So, and I just use a cordless one. It sits up here with a cutoff wheel in it. I just pop a battery in it whenever I need to do this. And this will be like the last, one of the last times I do it. And I couldn't find it on YouTube. Uh, I thought I'd done this before, but, but when you get through the last end there, push down on it slightly, okay? If you just push through, you, it'll, it'll pop up, and you'll end up with a little tit there that you got to grind off. Uh, I found that I get a nice flat face there if, uh, if I just hold down on it a little bit. So th these are the 411 ones. When I do the uh, 521 ones, I'll cut off more because the, the push rod is actually a bit shorter. So I didn't push down on it intentionally that time, just so you could see what I'm talking about there. Yeah, there we go. It focused in on it. So uh, I think I can still push across it firmly and uh, get it to go away. And this is all I'm doing. I'm just bringing them over, lining them up on the bottom, and drawing a line at 90 millimeters. These are uh, 90 for the truck with this particular clevis. And with the same clevis, the uh, 410s or uh, the 411s or. Uh, 110 millimeters. You can see there, there's the mark for 90. It's 30 millimeters longer. So it might seem kind of tedious putting them in here one by one, but uh, uh, I actually found that, you know, it's, it's, it's just as fast. I used to try to line up, but, you know, by the time you get something there to hold them all at an even height, blah, 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 it's just, um, even when I made, you know, 20 or 30 of them at one time, it just, just seemed a bit more convenient just to whip them out like this. And now that I'm all done, I remember what it was I was, uh, well, I was holding off on these. I have, that I, I picked up from uh, Northern Tool, a chop saw that mounts a four and a half inch grinder, four inch grinder, and I was going to uh, put that together and use it to chop all these off. Uh, <laughs> now I don't have any more bolts, so I guess I'll just have to do a demo later when I actually have... Uh, have it together. All right, I can't see the camera at this point. What I'm trying to do is uh, get a nice tight close-up shot of just how much this hardened bolt flexes.
So that's six thou for a rev right there. And while it's spinning, it leaves a beautiful finish. This is three thou per rev. Cycle time's only about 36 seconds, so... Uh, come on, get off of there. Sometimes it takes me longer to cycle out the part than uh, it does for the cut. Yes, it's intentional that I face it off to the final end, and I end up with a little flat spot on the end there. It's not that very end point that I need or want for it to make contact uh, in the cup of the master cylinder. So, and I was breaking a couple of tips with it. Uh, the way it was... Uh, reaching past center and coming back for the final pass on the arc. Uh, it, it didn't like that. So, all things considered. Now, I could go in and change it so that that profile cut is a different operation. And then I could cut back on the amount of... You see how I'm just cutting air here? I could get rid of that, but... You know, the stack's going down fast enough. I don't think I'm going to worry about uh, trying to speed it up anymore. The time I spend doing that is time I could be cutting parts and at a forgot to prep at 30 second 36 second cycle time 38 second cycle time if I spend you know 10 minutes tweaking and modifying that uh, if that's you know eight more parts I could have had made so. All right, well, we'll see how well uh, it comes out that close up. I'm not sure how much you get blocked. A couple things I did do was I changed the cut on the end here. It's 1,500 now, but it's three and a half thou per rev. Uh, and I wanted that nice and smooth because I'm leaving a little bit of a flat spot there at the end of the ball. And I may or may not explain that. Uh, and then the... Roughing pass is uh, 1,500 RPMs at 6,000 uh, inch per rev with uh, the first pass is only about 7 or 8 thou or so. It's just to clean it up because some of these bolts uh, are bent slightly. The other thing is, is that the... Uh, and then when you see it taking the... cutting the... Uh, the fillet down in the bowl, uh, those are 15 thou deep at the same uh, feed rate, 6,000 6, RPM, or 6 thou inch per rev with uh, 1,500 RPM. Then on the final pass, um, I changed that to 4, I changed it to 1,800 RPM and 4 thou per, 4 thousandths of an inch per rev uh, to get that that final finish and uh, it really cleaned up the ball on them so let's see what uh, see how well it records And that's nice. A lot of times I'm just not that pleased with my speeds and feeds. And these are dialed in.
Well, it's up. Time to go get her coffee.